next song I'm going to be talking about is Now You See Me Too. Now You See Me Too, of course, is the sequel to Now You See Me, which came out back in 2013, I think. And I have to admit, I'm not a massive fan of the first Now You See Me. I think it's perfectly fine. I do like the film. I think it's uh, pretty good. Uh, it's, a, it's just a fun, enjoyable film. It's, it's just a harmless film. It's perfectly fine. You know, it wasn't anything great. It was a fun heist movie. This kind of cool crime caper. But with this film, I was hoping to get something that was just a decent enough good movie that was fun and enjoyable but it wasn't even that I just I just I really didn't like this film and I was really disappointed because I wasn't expecting anything great you know I was hoping it would just be as good as the first film just a fun movie that you can enjoy and have a good time but it wasn't even that it just got boring fast it just felt like such a retread of what they did in the first film they tried to do the same kind of thing but it just didn't work nearly as well as it did in the first film. Like, we had these kind of performances when the four horsemen were on the stage. Not even they were fun. Like, in the first film, those were cool and fun to watch. Even though it was quite, you know, crazy over the top what they were doing, you kind of buy into it. They kind of explain what was going on and what, what, how they did it. In this film, they tried to do that. They tried to have these acts where they're on stage performing. But it's just not any fun. It just feels so old hat. Like, oh, we've just seen this one before. They're just doing the same kind of thing they did in the first one, but not nearly as well. And it just doesn't work it feels so repetitive it feels so tiring it feels so boring and it gets boring surprisingly very quickly i was checked out of the film so early on and just as i thought i couldn't get any more unbearable woody harrelson's twin comes on the screen and in case you don't know a lot of reviewers have mentioned it but woody harrelson's character has a twin in this film also played by woody harrelson i didn't know what the hell was going on at by that point, I was like, okay, we had the inciting incident, and I whisked off this location. I was like, okay, let's get going now. Let's get momentum. Let's get going. Let's get more fun and energetic. Let's get, let's get going with this. And then suddenly we get Woody Harrison's twin appears on the screen. I'm like, what the hell is going on now? It's like, and they tried to play this kind of comedy aspect, like, but it just doesn't work. Like, it's funny, but in a bad way. It's like unintentionally funny. And when it tries to be funny, it just falls flat and doesn't work. And I just don't know what the hell they were thinking with putting a character in this film that was Woody Harrelson's twin. I just don't get what the hell was going on. Because by that point, I didn't like the film. I found it tiring. I found it repetitive. I found it boring. It not long just started. But I was like, oh, come on, let's get going. We can pick this up now. We can get going and have some fun. But then by that point, as soon as Woody Harrelson's twin came onto the screen, it almost become like a parody of itself. Like, it was bad enough as it was. It was bad enough being just a tiring, repetitive, boring film. But then by the time that happened, it became almost like a, a mockery of itself. Almost like a Now You See Me parody. I don't know what was going on. It's like, because the first film... It's, it's not serious. It's not supposed to be the most serious film in the world. You're not supposed to spend just disbelief and the things that happen are kind of like quite over the top and out there. But you can, you can kind of buy into it in the first film anyway. But with this film, there's so much stuff that happens that's so ludicrous and crazy and over the top. It just goes way too far. Because the first film, there was that line where it could have crossed that line. It could have got just gone too far it could have gone too over the top but it didn't it it, it was quite far-fetched and outlandish and over the top in parts but you could kind of buy into it and they kind of explained it as it was going along and you were like oh okay, yeah okay i suppose that could happen i suppose you could do that with this film almost every single trick and magic act and illusion is so completely and utterly crazy and over the top and they're trying to do the same kind of thing of explaining it explaining how they did it but it just doesn't work. It just comes off as a joke. It's like, really? Is that... Is, it just became, like I said, almost a parody of itself. Like they were trying to do the same kind of thing as the first one, but it didn't work nearly as well. And it became almost a joke. It became so bad. And just as I thought I couldn't be on board with the movie any less, it got irritating from a filmmaking perspective. Technically, at least the first film was a good film. It was well done. Louis Leturier, who did the first film, I'm not a massive fan of his. I think he did an okay job with the Clash of the Titans remake. I like what he did with The Incredible Hulk. And he's got a sense of energy and dynamism in his direction. But with the director here, I'm not really familiar with who he is or his work, but it just felt so lazy and uninspired and just like such a repetitive, tiring, boring, retread of what we've already seen and it wasn't done nearly as well we got new elements in there which really didn't work that really fell flat and just felt really out of place there were so many technical 
glitches in the film that really bugged me. Like, at least the film wasn't irritating. It was tiring. It got repetitive. It got boring. It got annoying. But then it started irritating me. It, it bugged me in terms of how it was filmed. There were so many shots where it would just suddenly cut and characters would be in different positions or different places. And it just kept happening. I don't know if the average person would notice it as much as, say, I did. But it just kept happening and it kept bugging me. I don't know it wasn't on purpose. You could tell it, just, it was a making mistakes, continuity errors, and it just kept happening. Characters suddenly in different positions and it just, it felt very jarring and it really bugged me. I mean, there are things that I liked about this film. Mark Ruffalo's character is probably my favourite part. It was my favourite part of the first film. I mean, I liked the first one, but I think Mark Ruffalo was the, the best part. It really all revolved around him and he really carried that film. I liked him in this film as well. I think he did a good job. I also like Lizzie Kaplan as the new female horseman. She, of course, replaces Isla Fisher. I wasn't like massive fan of Isla Fisher. I think she did a good enough job in the first film. She was serviceable. She didn't get a whole lot to do, but she was fine. She was good enough. So I wasn't that upset when she dropped out there to replace her Lizzie Captain. I thought Lizzie Captain was good. She did a really good job of filling that role. You could tell she was having fun and enjoying herself and you could really have fun whenever she was on screen as well. And also there was a sequence in regards to the, a, a card sequence when they were throwing this card around they got this computer chip and they put it into this card and they were throwing this card around it's completely ludicrous and over the top how how it, how it happens it's like because in the first film Dave Franco is the only one who's good with a card but in this one they all learn how to be really good with a card and they're all flicking this card around throwing it around it it's it, it, you can't really buy into it but at least it's a fun cool standalone sequence it kind of plays into this larger plot of them getting this computer chip that Daniel Radcliffe wants them to get but then it can expose him and they want to get it off. He wants to get it from them, but then they want to keep it from them and they want to use it against him. And then they don't really actually have it and they want to pretend that they have it. And it's, I, I don't know what really was going on to be honest with you. It's like they were trying so desperately hard to recapture what they did well in the first film. And it just really falls flat and falls apart and really doesn't work. So as you may have figured, I really didn't like Night See Me 2. I really wouldn't recommend seeing it. If you're a fan of Night See Me and you're really excited for this film, I would say check it out. You may like it, you may find some enjoyment in it. I don't know, just me personally, I didn't find it any fun at all. I found it repetitive and tiring and boring and annoying and aggravating and irritating and it just really I really took against it even though I really wanted to like it going in I really wanted to have fun and enjoy it I don't think it was going to be the greatest film but I wanted it to be like the first film I wanted it to be just a fun harmless movie that was just a decent enough film that you could have fun and enjoy but like I said, for me, I didn't even find any enjoyment in it at all I didn't find it fun at all it really went me up the wrong way and I just really didn't like it so if you find out now you see me I would recommend probably going back and watching the first film it made me realise how much I actually liked the first film. So yeah, that's all I really had to say about Now You See Me Too. Mm -hmm.